Hello, dear students. Welcome you all to the 25th lecture of macroeconomics. And today we are going to start a very important and very interesting topic, monetary and fiscal policy of India. So let's start. Uh, first, we will see in today's lecture, uh, we will discuss a little bit about monetary policy and what are the instrument for that we will see. And in next lecture, we will discuss about the fiscal policy. So agenda for uh, this discussion is, first we will give a introduction, then we will discuss monetary policy, what are the rules, objective, what are the instruments, and how to beat inflation and unemployment with the help of monetary policy. And then we will discuss fiscal policy, roles and objective, budget, revenue expenditure, taxation, and fiscal set deficit we will discuss under this. So let's start with monetary policy first. So let's see what is the meaning of monetary policy. So RBI, Reserve Bank of India states that monetary policy refers to the use of instrument under the control of central banks to regulate the availability, cost and use of money and credit. If you people remember when we was discussing the inflation, uh, we discussed that what are the reasons of inflation and we came with the conclusion that when the money of supply exceed, it means there is a lot of liquidity in the market. In that scenario, the value of money decreases and we say it is inflation. So it is not an healthy, it is not a healthy situation for an economy. So that excess money need to be absorbed, okay? And in case when all the money is being uh, absorbed by uh, that uh, RBI, then what will happen that, uh, that industries will not have enough capital to start a business and they will start throwing the people out of the job. So unemployment will increase. Again, RBI has to inject money in the market. So how uh, they were doing that? with the help of inflation rate. So basically under this monetary policy, the instrument for monetary policy is the inflation, uh, sorry, uh, your interest rates. So uh, RBI or central bank uh, have, uh, they regulate the availability, cost and use of money and credit under the uh, monetary policy. So what are the objectives of monetary policy, first of all, maintaining price stability and inflation control. Second one, to ensure adequate flow of credit to the producer, productive sector of the economy to support economic growth because when the produ producers will have enough capital uh, to start a business, automatically the production will increase and as a result of that employment will be there and people's uh, that standard of living will rise and again the demand will be created with that so it is a circular pro process uh, rapid economic growth when, when it is required like unemployment is more all the production units are not doing very well so in that case uh, there is a requirement to inject uh, liquidity in the market so to increase the liquidity um, that uh, for rapid economic growth also, it is important to inject money in the market. So it is uh, possible with the help of monetary policy. Balance of payment equilibrium is also required. Uh, the cases when your um, uh, domestic currencies value increases or decreases in terms of um, dollars, so with the help of monetary policy, you can make a balance in that. Full employment or unemployment when you want to um, establish full employment situation or if there is a lot of unemployment, you want to generate employment. So that time also with the help of monetary policy, you can regulate the uh, supply of credit and equal income distribution for that also. These are the objectives of monetary policy on which uh, monetary policy works. Uh, so now let's discuss what are the different methods under uh, monetary policy. So RBI aims to achieve its objective of economic growth and control of inflation through various methods. So basically we have grouped these methods into two categories. First one is general or quantitative method and second one is selective uh, or qualitative methods. So let's see what are these. So first of all, we are discussing general or quantitative methods. 
So under these methods uh, or these methods maintain and control the total quantity or volume of credit or money supply in the economy. So let's see how these, they control the quantity uh, or credit um, supply in the money, uh, some uh, credit supply in the market. So for that two possibilities are there. First one is your open market operations. And second is your deployment of credit. So under open market operation, what happens? In this case, the government securities uh, can be buy or sell in the market, in the open market to balance the money supply in the economy. Let's say banks are there, okay? When excess liquidity is there, then the authority means RBI, what they will do? They will start selling the government securities to the banks. So bank will buy those security. And on behalf of those securities, they have to pay liquidity or money to the RBI. So in this way, uh, RBI can control the money supply by selling uh, the securities. In vice versa, another case, if uh, there is a shortage of money in the market, okay, and unemployment is increasing. So in that case, what the RBI will do, they will start purchasing the securities from the banks, okay? Uh, so what will happen in that case, they are buying the securities from the banks. On behalf of that, they are giving back money to the commercial bank and uh, that uh, excess liquidity will be passed to the creditors that individual household the industrial sector so they will get money from rbi with buying and selling of the government securities another method is deployment of credit so rbi has taken various measures to deploy credit in different sectors of economy and the certain percent percentage of bank credits has been fixed to various sectors like you have seen that in agriculture sector okay that interest rate is very less and for the industries also or uh, for farmers also uh, they have they they can get inter, uh, loans or they can get the credit in very cheaper interest rate so government has um, fixed uh, various sectors on which they feel that they have to give more emphasis and they should be uh, they should provide a very uh, easy credit to those sectors so that uh, the economy can um, run properly because agriculture sector is the primary sector and backbone of all those uh, secondary or tertiary sectors. So uh, government gives subsidies or subsidized loan to uh, primary sector as well. Now let's talk about the direct investment. We will discuss uh, cash reserve ratios and uh, SLR we will discuss. Uh, so with the help of this figure, first of all, uh, let us understand what is uh, cash reserve ratio and then we will go to theory. You see here, these are individuals, individual or household sectors. They deposit certain percentage of their income to banks. Okay, now banks also have to maintain a certain portion of their deposit to RBI. Okay, let's say the CRR is 6%. So in that case, what will happen if an individual is depositing 1000 rupees to bank? So bank need to pay 6% of that to RBI as a deposit. Okay, and 940 will be the balance with the bank. So this percentage, this CRR percentage can be uh, adjusted. Okay, so it can be adjusted from 3 to 15% based on or uh, seeing the situation like if liquidity is more in the market the crr will be increased if uh, rbi thinks that there is a requirement of uh, money in the market they will decrease the uh, uh, this crr rate okay so cash reserve rate uh, cash reserve ratio uh, is the bank in india are required to hold a certain proportion of their deposit in the form of cash with RBI. The money supply in the economy is influenced by CRR. How it happens, I just now I explained you. And RBI is authorita authorized uh, to vary the CRR between 3 to 15%. So seeing the situation, if more liquidity is required in the market, they will decrease the CRR. If they feel that more liquidity is there in the market and they need to absorb the money, they will increase the CRR. Next instrument is statutory liquidity ratio. Uh, 
so uh, what happens in that case when uh, let's see first uh, with the help of this uh, example so let's suppose 100 rupees an individual in investing uh, or depositing in a bank so if 20 percent is the slr so 200 of that will go to buy government securities okay and uh, on behalf of that although the banks will get the interest but still they have to buy those uh, security. So what happens under SLR, banks have to invest a certain percentage of its time and demand liabilities in government approved securities. So bank need to compulsory buy these securities. And the reduction in SLR enhance the liquidity of the commercial bank. If this SLR is 20% means bank need to buy 200 rupees of security. If this SLR is 10% only, then bank need to buy only 10% uh, of its um, uh, deposit uh, they need to spend on buying these commercial securities. So automatically the liquidity will increase if this interest rate will come down. So with this way also RBI uh, manage the liquidity in the market. So this is all for today's uh, lecture. In next lecture, we will discuss the indirect instruments. Uh, so today we discuss what is monetary policy. And under monetary policy, we have seen what are the methods uh, we use uh, to manage the liquidity in the market. And under this general or quantitative method and selective and quantitative methods we have discussed. So under uh, general or quant quantitative methods, we discuss about the open market operations, deployment of credit. And uh, in direct instruments, we have seen CRR and SLR and how RBI can maintain uh, the liquidity in the market. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any confusion, you can ping me on WhatsApp. I will solve your query there. Thank you so much.